Hello and welcome to Ms. Lowry's third grade ELAR classroom. Today we're going to start with our reading component of our reading lesson. Our reading objective comes from ELA 3.AA. Today I can determine the theme of a selection. The theme is the main message lesson or moral of the text. The theme can be stated in the text or it can be implied. So when it's implied, we have to use text clues to help us figure it out. We have to think about what happened to the characters, how do the characters react, what do the characters learn, and how do the characters grow or change? And from there, we then wanna ask ourselves, what is the author trying to teach me? Some examples of a theme are, be kind to others, friends are important, and don't give up. Today we're going to be using the following graphic organizer to help us determine the theme of a selection. So I'm going to model this before we start with the familiar text that we have read before. Mayor Saul McDonald doesn't match. So when I'm trying to determine a the theme, I first want to think about what is happening. So I know in that story, Mayor Saul learned that she should just be herself and mix and match is how she wants to be. Then I want to think about some evidence. What told me that's what the character learned? Her teacher encouraged her to be herself at the end of the story. Then from there, I want to think about what is the lesson that I can learn, the reader, from my character, Marisol McDonald? Because when we're thinking about things, we want to think about what is it that I can learn? What is it that other people can learn from that story? So we can say that the theme of the story is that it's better to be true to yourself than what others want you to be. That's a theme that can apply to many people. So when we're thinking about the theme of a story, a theme is gonna be something that can apply to many people. Today we'll be reading the story, Stink and the Freaky Frog Freak Out. And today as we read, I want you to focus on the lesson that the author wants you, the reader, to learn. Because remember, we're looking for theme. And when we're looking for theme, Theme is the lesson that the author wants you, the reader, to learn. Before we start, let's go over some vocabulary that you will see in the story. Annual. An annual event happens once each year. The whole family looks forward to Aunt Betty's annual harvest feast. Recited. If you recited something, you said it out loud after you had learned it. Lucas had practiced the speech in his head, but he felt nervous as he recited it in front of the class. Protested. If you protested, you said why you did not agree with a statement or an idea. The workers protested when they disagreed with the company's new policies. So again, today we're gonna to be reading the story Stink in the Freaky Frog Freakout by Megan McDonald, illustrated by Peter H. Reynolds. This is an example of a realistic fiction story that we're gonna be reading today. When we are reading it, you'll see that we'll have characters that think, behave, and act like real people. The events that are in the story could really happen in real life. So that's why this is an example of a realistic fiction story. Judy's, Moody's younger brother Stink has been finding frogs all over the place at the pool, in his boot, even in the bathtub. When Stink and his friends visit a nature center to learn about frogs, they find out about the first annual Frog Neck Lake frog count. Before he can participate in the late night adventure though, Stink has to study different frogs and the sounds they make and pass a quiz. Annual an annual event happens once each year. Freak, rock, squeak. Stink listened to frogs' calls on the computer. He listened to frog sounds that he taped with his own tape recorder by sticking it out the window at night. Stink listened to frog calls on the way to school, Monday morning, and in the car on the way to swim lessons. Freak, rock, squeak. It's one practice he tries some out on his friends. You sound like a duck, said Webster. You sound like a squeak toy, said Sophia. You sound like a sick banjo, said Riley. Thanks, said Stink. See, spring peppers sound like squeak toys, and wood frogs sound like ducks quacking. You're quacked, said Webster. 
Sophia and Riley quack, cracked up. You guys sound like southern leopard frogs. A leopard frog sounds like a person laughing. No lie. Yeah, but nothing sounds like a sick banjo, said Riley. Nothing except for the northern green frog. It sounds like a loose banjo string. You know, like a rubber band twang. You sure are freaky for frogs, said Riley. Thanks, said Stink. You should marry a frog. You like them so much. Hardy har har, said Stink. Stink could not wait till swimming was over. He had a great idea for how to learn frog sounds. He would need a comb, a balloon, two rocks, a can of spray paint, a rubber band, a rubber duck, some jingle bells, and that's all. Stink blew up the balloon and rubbed it with his hand. He clicked the rocks together. He twanged a rubber band. Judy poked her head into Stink's room. Mouse the family cat squeezed past her. Stink, I'm trying to study my times table and I can't hear myself. She stopped when she saw the pile of junk on Stink's floor. What? I'm using this stuff to make frog sounds. Here, I'll show you. Stink rubbed his finger along the teeth of the comb. This sounds like a chorus frog. Stink shook the can of spray paint, and this sounds like a northern cricket frog. Mouse darted under the bed. And this, R sounds like mom when she sees this mess on your floor, said Judy. Party hard, hard, chuckled Stink. You're croaking me up. Can you please shut your door so I don't have to hear Froggle Rock all day? Stink seems to be really invested in the frog contest because he is practicing and studying. Have you ever studied for something or worked hard towards something? Stink squeaked his rubber duck down the stairs. He snored up a storm while he made a snack. He shook the can of paint, clicked the stones, and jingled the bells. Wood frog, pickler, frog, cricket frog, he recited. Stink, keep it down, please, said Dad, poking his head around the corner. I'm on the phone. No spray painting in the house, said Mom. Take that outside. I'm not painting, said Stink. Doesn't anybody around here know a northern cricket frog when they hear one? Mom crinkled her forehead. It's homework, said Stink. I have to take a test. A frog test, said Judy, coming into the kitchen. I have to learn frog calls, said Stink, for the first annual Frog Neck Lake Frog Count on Friday. Right, said Mom. It's a real thing. The test is on the computer, Stink told her. You click on a frog and it makes a sound. Then you guess which frog is making the sound. Multiple choice, said Judy. Easy peasy, she teased. I have a multiple choice for you, said Mom. You can go back upstairs and A, finish your homework, B, finish your homework, C, finish your homework, or D, all the above. Recite it. If you recited something, you said it out loud after you learned it. But, Stink protested. It's your choice, Mom said. Stink shrugged back up the stairs with Judy close behind. And don't forget your non-frog homework too, Mom called. In Stink's room, Mouse curled up on his backpack. How am I going to learn all these frog calls by Tuesday, Stink said. Stink asked Judy. He held out his notebook for her to see. You can't go on the frog count unless you pass the quiz. I'll help you, said Judy. But let's make it a game. Instead of rock, paper, scissors, we'll call it rock, balloon, twig toy. How do we play? Close your eyes. I'll make a sound. You guess which frog it is. But we have to keep it down because mom won't like us doing frog homework first. Okay, come on, says Stink. He squeezed his eyes shut. Judy rubbed the balloon. She twanged the rubber band. She clicked the stones. Judy helps Stink with Stink with his studying. What does Judy do in order to help Stink study? I want you to use this sentence stem to answer the question. Judy blanks to help Stink study.
On this page, we also saw the word protested. And protested again means if you protested something, you say why you don't agree with a statement or an idea. <laughs> Mouse pawed at the stones. Chorus frog, wood frog, cricket frog, stink guest. Judy checks stinks notebook. Sorry, leopard frog, green frog, cricket frog. Stink hung his head. Hey, you got one right, cricket frog. Come on, Stink, just get super duper quiet and really listen, okay? Ready? Ready, Freddy, says Stink. Judy rubbed, clicked, squeaked, and twanged. Balloons, stones, squeak toy, rubber band. Stink said, that's leopard frog, cricket frog, spring prep pepper, green frog. Bingo, said Judy. She laughed, chuckled, whistled, peeped, snored, squeaked, jingled, and croaked until Stink knew pickler frog from pepper frog, chorus frog from cricket. Yikes, said Judy, putting a finger to her lips. I bet they can hear us all the way at the end of Croker Road. Do you think they call our street Croker Road because of all the frogs? Because of animal frogs? Stink, not human boy frogs. Ribbit? Stink croaked. Okay, close your eyes. I bet I can stump you. Ready? Judy made a zzz sound. Bullfrog. No, wood frog. No, bullfrog. He opened his eyes. Zipper frog, said Judy. That was just me zipping the zipper on your backpack. No fair, said Stink. There's no such thing as a zipper frog. Brown? Mouse pounced on the jingle bell. Jingle frog. Stink and Judy said at the same time. They cracked themselves up. We gotta finish our not frog homework, Stink. Besides, you're like the frog king now. No, you're like the president of the frogs. Now you just have to practice on real frogs. Squeak, says Stink. On Tuesday, Stink Moody, frog genius, Passed his test with flying colors. Frog test, that is. Stink could not wait for Frog Friday. So today we're looking at the theme, the main message, the lesson of this story. So as you know, we want to ask ourselves a few things. We want to ask ourselves, what happens to the characters? What do the care? How do the characters react to what happened to them? What do the characters learn? And how do the characters grow or change? And from there, we want to try to figure out what is the author trying to teach us, the reader, something that can apply to a lot of people. So I want you to look at the following evidence from the text. In Stink's room, Mouse curled up on his backpack. How am I going to learn all of these frog calls by Tuesday? Stink asked Judy. He held out his notebook for her to see. You can't go on the frog count unless you pass the quiz. I'll help you, said Judy, but let's make it a game. Instead of rock, paper, scissors, we'll call it rock, balloon, squeak toy. So I want you to think about what is happening to the character. What could the character be learning from this evidence in the text? So from this, we know that Stink really wants to participate in the annual frog count, but he has to study and take a quiz on the different frog sounds they make. Judy is helping him learn a fun way to do this by creating a game. So from there, I want you to think about what is the theme of this story? And remember, the theme is something that can apply to many people. So I want you to answer the following question. I can infer that the theme of the story is A, frogs are fun to study, or B, learning different ways can be easy and fun. Remember, the theme is something that can apply to a lot of people. So between A and B, I want you to think about which one of these lessons can be learned by more than one person. 
Let's check our answer. So you were trying to figure out what is the theme of this selection. And remember, when we think about theme, we want to think about what is a lesson that us, the reader, can learn and that can apply to many different people. So we had A, that we confer that the theme of the story is A, frogs are fun to study, or B, learning different ways can be easy and fun. So from there, the answer that you should have chose would have been answer choice B. Learning different ways can be easy and fun. That's something that can apply to a lot of people. A, frogs are fun to study. Everyone doesn't necessarily like frogs, so that can't necessarily that wouldn't necessarily apply to everyone. So B is going to be the correct answer, a choice for what is the theme of this story. We're now going to move into our writing component of our lesson for today. Our first writing objective comes from ELA 3.11 DI. Today, I can identify conjunctions and form compound sentences. So we know a compound sentence is two simple sentences put together. So when we create a compound sentence, we have to join them together with something called conjunctions. The words and, but, or, and so are coordinating conjunction. A comma comes before the conjunction in a compound sentence. Conjunctions can also be used to join compound subjects and predicates. Let's look at the following sentence as an example. Mary and Tom like to cook and she likes to read and write. So in this sentence, we have a conjunction and for our first part, Mary and Tom. That is a compound subject because we have two subjects, Mary and Tom. But then we have, and she likes to read and write. And in this case is a conjunction because it's joining together the sentence, Mary and Tom like to cook, with the sentence, she likes to read and write. So we see the comma and the conjunction. But then in the sentence, we see another conjunction of and. But this time, that conjunction is joining together our predicates of read and write. Because there's two different things. She likes to read and write. Let's identify the conjunctions in each of the following compound sentences. Number one, Morgan wants to go to the store and she wants to see her friends. In this sentence, our conjunction is going to be comma and. It's conjoining the sentence, Morgan wants to go to the store with she wants to see her friends. So we're putting together those two simple sentences with the conjunction comma and to make that a compound sentence. Number two, Mateo and Maya ran in the race and Mateo won. In this sentence, the first conjunction we see is and. We're combining the two subjects of Mateo and Maya together. So we see that conjunction and. Do you see another conjunction? Yes, comma and Mateo won because that's combining the sentence Mateo and Maya ran in the race with the sentence Mateo won. Number three, mom bought bread and eggs, but she forgot to get milk. One conjunction I see is and. That combined our two sub, that combined our nouns of bread and eggs. Do you see another one? Yes, but that conjunction combined the, combined the sentence mom brought bread and eggs with the sentence she forgot to get milk, making this a compound sentence. Number four, the friends plan to go to a movie tonight or they will go tomorrow. In this sentence, our conjunction is or. That combines our simple sentence of the friends plan to go to a movie tonight with the sentence they will go tomorrow, making that a compound sentence. And last sentence five, we have everything we need to make dinner so we can start cooking. In that sentence, we see the conjunction of comma, so. Combining our simple sentence of, we have everything we need to make dinner, to our sentence, we need to start cooking. Combining those together to make our compound sentence. So our conjunction is comma, so. 
Remember, a conjunction co combines two simple sentences together. We're always going to see a comma right before our conjunction. So whenever we're writing a compound sentence, and we want to all make sure we include a comma before we write our conjunction. A conjunction can also um, show us two different subjects, combine two subjects together and two predicates together. So our objective comes from ELA 3.12D. Today I can write to a prompt following the writing process. This is our writing process. So we have pre-writing, drafting, revision, editing, and pub publication. Today we're going to be focusing in on the pre-writing component of the writing process. So today we're going to be writing a personal narrative. Read the following. The future is me, open for all possibilities. Think about your hopes and dreams for the future. Write about one of your goals for this year and how you think you can accomplish them. So again, today we're going to be writing a personal narrative. And a personal narrative is a personal story. So we're going to be writing about a personal story about something about ourselves. So our prompt is asking us to write about a goal that we want to achieve and how we're going to achieve it. So we're going to be creating this by using our beginning, a middle, and an end. Our beginning is going to be a where we're going to catch our reader's attention and we're going to address and establish the purpose of our writing. In the middle, we're going to be giving details about how we're going to achieve that goal. And then in the end, we're going to tell why we want to accomplish this goal and what is going to be the outcome of us accomplishing this goal. Today, we're going to be using the following graphic organizer to help us start with our pre-writing, the planning, the planning of our writing. So what we're going to focus in on next is this graphic organizer here in the middle with these two circles. So we're going to use this graphic organizer to help us brainstorm some ideas for our writing. So again, our prompt is to write about one of your goals for this year and how you think you can accomplish them. On the outside of our circle, we're going to come up with some ideas for our writing. So I'm going to, per, I'm going to come up with some goals that I have for myself for this year. So one of my goals is to read more. Another goal for me is to work out every day. And then another goal is for me to save money monthly. So from there, I want to choose the best topic that I will be able to really write on. So I want to talk about how I'm going to accomplish this goal too. So I want to choose one that I can elaborate, explain how I'm going to achieve that. I want you to draw the following graphic organizer on your piece of paper. And on the outside circle, I want you to come up with some different goals that you have for yourself for this year. From there, we're going to determine the best one that we're going to be able to write about. So I'm going to give you a few moments to come up with some different ideas or some different goals that you have for yourself this year. Here's our graphic organizer from the beginning that we're going to use to help us organize our writing. So our writing prompt again is to write about one of your goals for this year and how you think you can accomplish them. Our audience is the people who's going to be reading this. So I came up with my audience that's going to be some students, so some students possibly will read my writing and other teachers. So I want you to think about who is going to be the audience for your writing. The purpose. The purpose of this is going to be to entertain my reader. I want my reader to read this and really be entertained, really enjoy what I'm writing. So we filled out this first part with our two circles where we came up with different ideas about one of our goals. And from there, we were supposed to choose the best one that we will really be able to write a good personal narrative on. So from mine, I chose my goal of saving money monthly. So that's what I'm going to write about. So I want you to choose which one do you think that you're going to be able to write a good personal narrative on. And I want you to put, on, put it in that part of your graphic organizer. 
In the beginning, we're going to introduce, set our purpose for our writing. So our purpose for our writing is to tell about one of the goals that we want to accomplish. So I'm going to talk about that in my beginning. My goal is to save money monthly. My middle, my middle, I want to talk about how I'm going to accomplish that goal. So next, I want to make sure I put in some, put this, put a certain amount of money in my checking account, my savings account every time I get paid. So every time I get paid, I'm going to put a certain amount of money in my savings account. I'm only going to spend money on my necessities and not my wants. So in our middle, we're going to talk about how we're going to accomplish that goal. So in order for me to save money monthly, I need to put a certain amount in my savings account each check, and I need to only spend money on necessities, not my wants. And then in the end, we're going to talk about what is going to happen because of this goal. So saving money is going to help me be able to be ready for my future. So then, again, in the beginning, the beginning is catching the reader's attention. And we're addressing and establishing the purpose of our writing. So in this one, we're going to be talking about what is our goal. Our middle. Our middle is giving details about how the goal is going to be achieved. What are we going to do to achieve that goal? Giving at least two different ways we're going to achieve that goal. And then our end. Our end is going to tell us why we want to accomplish this goal and what is going to be the outcome of us accomplishing this goal. You're going to fill out your graphic organizer. You're going to establish who is your audience? Who are you writing this for? From your graphic organizer that you created earlier, what is going to be the goal that you're going to write about? And you're going to place that in our next box. I will write about the time. What is the goal that you're going to be writing about? In your beginning, your beginning is where you're establishing the purpose of the writing. So because we're talking about a goal in this section, you're going to be talking about what is the goal that you want to achieve. In our middle part, we're going to be giving details about how the goal is going to be achieved. What are you going to do in order to achieve that goal? And then our end, our end is going to tell why you want to accomplish this goal. And what is going to be the outcome of you accomplishing that goal? Thank you for joining my reading. Thank you for joining my reading and writing lesson for today. See you later.